Howdy folks, I hope the quarantine is uh, treating you okay. We just got another couple weeks of it. It almost feels anticlimactic because, hey, we've been here, we've done that, we could do it. But I was thinking about quarantine, it makes us feel pretty cozy. We're stuck at home, we don't get to meet new people, <laughs> we don't get to meet old people, we uh, don't get to meet anybody, we're just trying to stay huddled in our own uh, own circles and while while I support social distancing I want to tell you our faith has something else to say and and here it is we find in Ephesians continuing in chapter 4 verses 3 to 6 Paul says make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit, just as you are called to one hope when you are called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Now, of course, Paul's talking about the church. He's talking about how this, uh, this movement within the Jewish population that's, that's attracting Gentiles in, in this ancient Rome, uh, Roman Empire, is all connected by the Holy Spirit. And I wanna, I've got a couple things to, to consider. One, I think that our church, Fenton Presbyterian Church is particularly good at, is recognizing that the Holy Spirit is Lord over churches. And so we can participate with other churches in ministry, in worship, in uh, fellowship, and that is a good and wonderful and God-honoring thing. The partnership that we have with St. Jude's, as they, uh, some of those things, some of those, those partnerships are natural and organic. People know folks at St. Jude's, and they help out. And others are more official, where there's a there's an ask, like last weekend. Hey, we need loaves of bread and cereal, and you all stepped up in a big way, and they got taken care of more than enough. And it is a fantastic thing. And it, there's, uh, there are people who are eating this week and feeling satisfied because of your generosity and because of our ability as a church to engage with other churches' efforts to, uh, for ministry and mission. And that's a wonderful thing. There's one spirit between Episcopals and Presbyterians. That's fantastic. I mean, the same thing goes for our work with the Freedom, uh, the Freedom Center, Center of Hope. Uh, they're Assemblies of God. They're Pentecostal Church. Oh my! But it's the Holy Spirit that calls us as Presbyterians together in our particular church, and it calls them as Assemblies of God Christians together. And it's a marvelous thing. God is the Father of us all. And as we are as churches seek to minister, our partnerships with each other is encouraging and it's a good witness to the world. This is the kind of church that Jesus calls us to be, I believe. One that can work and with other churches that might be very different from us in culture and practice. But primarily, as we know, if they're willing to confess who Jesus is, hey, Let's do some work together and make the world a better place and honor Christ while doing it. But also, the last thing I want to speak to, to you about is I make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There's one body and one Spirit. And Paul's talking about the church, yeah. But I want to challenge you specifically about uh, something that, that's really relevant to this COVID-19. And that's, as you read the newspaper, as you look online and watch the news and hear about things, in our particular community, Fenton, yes, I might be talking too soon because we might get ravaged uh, pretty harshly in the next couple of weeks. But by and large, our local community has not been hit ex very hard as compared to Flint and Detroit. And we tend to get too cozy with ourselves, I think, especially in, in this social distancing. It's just far too easy to imagine, okay, everything's going to be okay. And we don't recognize and we don't feel 
the devastation that is going on just 15, 20 minutes up the road from us in Flint and maybe 45 minutes, an hour away from us in Detroit. There are communities there that just uh, are, are being traumatized and being devastated because of COVID-19. There are, uh, Pastor Lindsay, who's, you know, as you know, in, as interim pastor at uh, Trinity Presbyterian Church in, in Flint Township, uh, did, a, did a graveside and the funeral home was completely overwhelmed didn't look like the, the funeral home workers were sleeping. I mean, it, there was just so much to do. It is easy for us to look at those stories and say, well, that's them. That's another community, isn't that bad? I think we need to grow our hearts a little bit and recognize that, you know, that's, that's us. That's our body there suffering. And while we might not be able to do much of anything about it, we can always pray and we can always beseech our Lord for mercy and for providence and for strength for those who are suffering. And we might, we might yet find ways of reaching out and healing and bringing the love of Christ into those situations. It might be virtually, it might be physically uh, when the time comes. But I think the first step is to pray, recognizing that it is one spirit that connects us all. And even though it, we find out through the newspaper or the internet, we are connected. The Holy Spirit connects us with others who are suffering. And we should prepare our hearts with prayer, in, prayer for them in order to when the time comes, we'll be ready to serve them and to encourage them. So with that, friends, this is our continuation of, of our Ephesians study. But remember, our God is one God and the Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And that includes this COVID-19 disaster. It includes our uh, economy and um, and, and the hole that we're going to have to dig out of when we get out of this, it includes everything. We are all in God's hands. So remember, the kingdom's here and the kingdom's coming and the king reigns. Bye for now.